everybody, and welcome. Welcome. This is Lady of Faith and her other half. And we're coming to you with spiritual perspectives of the Sunday School lesson entitled Jesus Silences Critics for Sunday, September the 10th, 2023. A critic is a person that can have a harsh opinion or find fault with something or someone. And what would be the rationale for doing it? Uh, well, you have different types of critics. You have critics that, uh, like movie critics, or you have critics that, uh, comment on people's lives. And I don't know, um, let's see, what, what other kinds of critics? Well, there's critics. Well, see, there's one thing is like critics now. Like, for instance, uh, uh, when Obama ran for president and they kept coming up saying, where is his, his, uh, First thing, he's not this. It's always criticizing what he's doing, even like Biden, you know, the, the politics. You can get in the critics. They do it to control, try to demonize or try to belittle uh, someone else so they can raise themselves to a certain, you know, level. For instance, the, uh, that, that one mass shooting that this particular uh, young man he decided to go into a, a dollar store. You remember that incident? Mm -hmm. And th then this is one thing I, I would like to point out. Then why is it that individual, he hated, it was a hate, it considered a hate crime. Why did he turn around and take his own life? Why did he do that? I don't know. See, that's interesting. And, and that's what other, you know, like you see it all through the news and, and it's like an associate of mine. Yeah, the news is, is very depressing, but uh, I, I can sit and look at it and, and I ask myself this question. You know, if they feel that they're so right, everybody feels, you know, you know, there's a lot of things in there. Just pick one. Ask yourself this question. If they, why do they turn around, take their lives, or why do they turn around and they turn around and start hiding stuff? If, they, if they're telling the truth, then why do you got to hide anything? You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's a good point. If you know that you're doing right no. and you're not ashamed and you're proud of of right. what you're doing or who you are, why do you have to hide it? Yeah. Why do you have to hide it? And these are the critics I'm talking about. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they want to criticize everything, but when the light is turned back on them, they got to hide it. Why? Okay. Now that brings us to the uh, Pharisees in today's lesson, or in Sunday's lesson. Uh, the Pharisees were, uh, I think they were like uh, well-educated in the uh, yes. Jewish law, mm -hmm. and they were uh, critics of people that they perceive as breaking those those laws. Now, I think they were more concerned about the outward appearance instead of what was in the person's heart. Or tradition, tradition. Or tradition. They tradition. tried to twist the laws to make themselves look good, are holier than thou, or to appear to be self-righteous when they had ulterior motives of thinking they were all that. I wish people would just slow down and turn around and shine a light on their own personal life, life, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and take a look at it. Now these Pharisees, uh, the questions that were asked when Jesus turned around and asked the, the one question they asked in here, and I thought it was interesting, and the NIV said one thing and another. Uh, it said if you had, uh, I'm just going to say animal, because when people turn around, I use the other term that's in the, in the Bible. Uh, they say, ooh, he's the bad word. But you know, a donkey, an uh, ox or something that fell in a ditch or something. Mm -hmm. And they needed assistance. And it happened, it happened, so happened on the Sabbath day. The question is, would you bring, would you go and, and rescue your best ox or your best... A uh, child, the scripture yeah. said a child and or NIV, an ox. In the NIV it said child. Okay, child that, that's or what ox. Uh-huh. That's what I mean by the King James doesn't say child, but okay. the NIV says that. Oh, okay. Okay. We want to sit here and debate. Uh, well, it didn't say that in the King James. No, it didn't change the whole environment of what, it, what Jesus was trying to, to teach. On the Sabbath day, what are you going to do? You're going to leave your child, your wife? This is what this passage that Jesus was asking these Pharisees. Because at the, at the beginning, you remember it said uh, they watched him closely, mm -hmm. which means is People are just going to sit here and try to find. Yeah, I have a, I have right a comment about that part because I think do you well do y'all think that the Pharisees were jealous of Jesus 
because he had uh, charisma, he had a, a large following, and they were uh, jealous of him because uh, he, because they didn't have what he had. Being so. your minds at rest and peace, and you know from the days. Um, events yeah. or activities and yeah. you just winding down your right. peace. Right. You know, coming up as a child, I've always taught, you know, uh, God created on the six days and then on the seventh day, he rest. He rested, right. And we've turned that into a, a ritual and didn't understand what God, why he was resting. It took a lot of energy out of him. You know, because look what he did. He created the universe. That's a lot of energy, you know. Right. I, I, I don't know that much about the attributes of what God is, but but it was written and it was that knowledge was shared with us saying that he rests. Now, I do know what I know about us phys physically as human beings. Uh, you know, there was a driving test and, you know, they had a, a test where uh, it was DUI, you know, a certain alcohol, you know, a level. They, they ran through a driving test control environment. Then they turned around and they, I think it was like 48 hours, the person had no sleep and they both took the same test. And we found out the person with uh, the sleep had lesser control of their body. They were the most dangerous ones. They had no sleep, you mean? Yeah, the, the no sleep, you know, no lack sleep. of sleep. Lack. They were the more dangerous on the course that they were doing the test on. Mm. If you're it's like awful. homeless, that's another uh, point I want to point out. Over a year, mental illness starts to set in. You know, this, look at the paranoia. Where are you going to sleep? Do you, can you trust this person? You're out with no roof and no, and no way really securing yourself. Uh, this person needs rest. In other words, myself personally, I have noticed when I was younger, oh, I could stay and do these real long hours and, and still function. But after I got wiser and older, I found out that really wasn't a good idea because I spent sometimes like 3 o'clock in the morning, kept doing the same thing over simple. And if I had gotten some rest, it probably took me an hour with no sleep and took me about a couple minutes to finish because I could think clear. So what I'm saying, for mental reasons, for our physical health reasons, we need to rest our body so it can heal, so it can rejuvenate. Right. Mentally, physically, and, and especially spiritually. You can just think clear. And emotionally. Yeah. Just think but I think it was uh, sometimes challenging, just like it is today, well, if we use it as an excuse, uh, to adhere to laws because of the confusion of how people interpret or understand or their perspective of what to do or what not to do, or what is allowed, and what is not allowed. The point is that we should awesome. show mercy to others, no matter what day it is, I'm getting back to the Sabbath. Yeah. Well, and like we said earlier, any day is a good day to do something good. Well, see, it's, you know, people, you know, I, I have some very close uh, friends, they, they're practicing or, Orthodox Jews. They're very good people. And this is what they believe. They believe with the old tradition and I'm not going to go into Bible. See, I, I don't go into Bible to an attack. Then I become a critic, you know, mm -hmm. criticizing what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And is that really going to help? Now, the nature, the reason why I said they're good people and good friends, they have done no wrong. They're very respectful and everything. So it's like, I think my wife is trying to correct me if I'm wrong. People get so involved in, oh, this is a Baptist church. This is a church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they think, that just because you go to my church, you won't be saved versus the other. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, the world's looking at us. And if we're fighting among ourselves, and they're going to say, I'm already doing that at home, so what, what, you know, you guys can't get together. So why in the world I want to learn anything about that? God just wants us to show unconditional love toward others and not uh, criticize or judge them or, like the Pharisees were doing to Jesus, look for something that he's doing wrong or to criticize him for when um, taking care of ourselves is a full-time job. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, it, matter of fact, uh, those that are football fans, the football season has started. And, uh, I, you know, being an ex-athlete, I'm not really interested in sitting and watching football, but there's one football team that really got my attention is uh, Colorado. And they beat... Uh, TCU, Texas Christian University, and, and the thing is, when you say criticize, uh, you know, of course Colorado won with Coach Prime,
but I just sat down and listened to some of his interviews and what he said. He's a, he's a, he's a competitor, but I, not just because, well, there's one thing that he asked. He said, what, uh, what is the role model that he presents to the kids? He said, Jesus. Okay, and I'll close with this. The bottom line is, from all this discussion, is as we as believers, what's important is our morals, our integrity, and our sincerity. What is a motive? Our, why, we, why do we do what we do? What's our intention? Yeah, what's our intention? So yeah. we have to make sure that it's uh, positive. And, okay. And I just want to quickly say this, how you're wrapping it up. Yes. Uh, like the tree of knowledge, people, you know, in the church is, oh, it's an apple. No, no, it, that tree, I'm talking about the tree in the garden. It, people keep saying apple. It's not apple. you got to put it in this right context. It's the tree of knowledge. So, so whatever that looks like, uh, when they ate of that, they became knowledgeable. My point is this. We can say, well, what does the preacher say? Or what does this person say? We all know, we have it in us. We know what's right, what's wrong, what we like and we don't like. And when we see something... Well, that's not very good, you know, and, and then sometimes you may not know, but still you're going to go find out. Is this a good thing if I'm, you know, I'll say this, is, is it a good thing if I just turn around and say, oh, I'm stealing in the name of the Lord? Nope, it's still stealing. You're not stealing it. He's not accepting that. Okay. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time. That's right, what she said. Thanks for watching.